Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is a get woke, go broke scenario. I mean, to a certain extent it is. But for a company like Disney, I mean, at this point, I think they're too big to fail. They have their tentacles wrapped in so many different areas of business. Maybe at this point, they're just willing to take a loss on some of the content that they're putting out there. But holy moly, how many PR blunders can this company sustain? How much woke crap is it really going to take for Disney? Disney to go under or honestly better yet for Disney to start changing their strategy and doing a 180. After the last woke trailer disaster, The Little Mermaid being one of the highest disliked video in YouTube history, you'd think that Disney would learn their lesson that forced diversity and diversity quotas doesn't magically translate to incredible box office success, but of course, like most of the people and entities that have joined this woke cult, they've learned nothing, they refuse to learn anything, and now they've rebranded my favorite childhood movie, Peter Pan in possibly the most woke way imaginable. Let's just say it's not exactly going so well with the fan base. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so if it wasn't enough that they race swapped Snow White, then of course they race swapped The Little Mermaid, followed by the remake of The Proud Family, pushing literal neo Marxist intersectionality feminist talking points. Do something! Let's go! If all that wasn't enough, well, take a look at the new Peter Pan movie from Walt Disney Studios. Tell me, how did you come to Neverland? Lost boys. Every last one of us. But you're not all boys. So? What is this place? It's home. Peter found it. Just like he found all of us. It's like he found me. Peter Pan? Were you expecting someone else? What do you say, boys? You ready for an adventure? It looks very far away. It's closer than you think. There! Look! What is it that you're afraid of, my love? Huh? Perhaps I don't want to grow up. Hold the past in your heart, but where you go from here, it's up to you. Wendy, Moira, Angela, darling. Where is Peter Pan? Now, apparently this is launching on Disney Plus. I'm not 100% sure, but it says Disney Plus. And like usual with these woke remakes, I'm just sitting here scratching my head asking myself, why? The leftist response, of course, is why not? They view any criticism or any detractor from any white individual as, quote, white fragility. But it really has nothing to do with that. It's just a simple question. I don't get why this is the focus. You can tell that so much effort in this movie was put into reaching gender and race quotas. What is the point? point of that. You know, in the entertainment industry, it seems almost as if it's illegal at this point, it's some sort of hate crime, to have a movie with mostly white characters. I view it fundamentally as anti-whiteism. It's a cultural war aimed at the destruction of white culture. I'm just gonna say it outright. I mean, let's take a look at the lore of Peter Pan. Peter Pan first appeared as a character in Barry's Little White Bird, which was a novel for adults published in 1902. In chapters 13 to 18, titled Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, Peter is a seven-year-old baby and has flown from his nursery to the Kensington Gardens in London, where the fairies and birds taught him to fly. He is described as betwixt and between a boy and a bird. The location where the story takes place is in Kensington Gardens, London, in the year 1902. The fundamental historical fact 
The circumstance of this story, the setting of this story, is in London in the early 1900s, where the basic demographic fact of the location was entirely white. Of course, not 100%, but pretty much I'd say probably in the high 90s. This is a white culture fantasy story. That is fundamentally what it is. Why is that somehow a bad thing? Why is it that other cultures get to keep their stories? You know, here's a recent example actually from Disney as well, Moana, for instance. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this takes place in Hawaii, and the culture of the movie is celebrating Samoan culture and the Samoan people. Why is it that that's allowed, but a story that originated in the early 1900s in England isn't allowed to keep its racial heritage? Essentially, the message that the woke entertainment crowd is sending is that it's not okay for something to be white, it's not okay to be white, and that white culture should be entirely and utterly dismantled. I don't think that that's white fragility, I think that's just straight up wrong, I think that's anti-whitism. Of course, somehow that's a controversial take, leftoids of course will have their panties in a knot, but I think it's the basic truth here. I mean, watching that trailer from The Lost Boys all the way to Tinkerbell, you could tell just how forced it is. The people who were doing casting for this movie weren't picking young aspiring actors based on their merits and based on their talents, or based on being true to the actual story and history of Peter Pan itself, they were filling gender quotas and it's even beyond gender quota because the majority of the UK, the majority of the United States of America, in terms of population based on census data, is white. The UK is 81.7% white. The United States is in the low 60s if I'm not mistaken, but even those population percentages aren't respected in these movies. Other races are overrepresented in terms of population split. It's clearly contrived and it's clearly forced. It's a clear woke agenda that dominates the decision making in the boardroom above everything else. And that's why these projects fail repeatedly. And actually speaking of contrived woke nonsense, you notice how the title of the movie is no longer Peter Pan. No, of course not. That's somehow misogynistic and sexist. Can't have the focal point on a male lead character. No, it's Peter Pan and Wendy. The whole thing is just so utterly ridiculous. And it's frustrating to the fan base because people don't want to see these studios taking their childhood favorites, childhood classics, altering them, twisting Listing them and using them as cultural political vessels to genuflect to the woke crowd trying to farm some social media cloud online. With the woke movie review brigade, they want to revisit the stories that they fell in love with as kids. And for me it's personal because Peter Pan was my all-time favorite movie as a kid. Back in the 1990s watching movies on VHS, my mother used to take me to the local movie rental store every single weekend and I used to rent Peter Pan on repeat every weekend and watch it maybe 10 or 15 15 times back to back throughout the entire weekend and I did this throughout almost an entire summer if I'm not mistaken and I must have watched the movie hundreds of times and now frankly the movie has been desecrated as I stated it's now just being used as a vessel to push a social agenda and in my opinion by doing that well Hollywood is trying to erase white culture entertainment masterpieces and I think that's fundamentally wrong I think white European culture is not inherently evil attacking white European culture doesn't fix any social problem replacing white fictional characters with different genders and races does absolutely nothing for no one, and I just don't get why we can't see more unique stories. You know, Peter Pan is now Peter Pan and Wendy. Why? The story's focal point is Peter Pan, not Peter Pan and Wendy. If you want to make your own series or your own fantasy story that follows a young girl, then go and make it. I don't get why that can't exist on its own. The hijacking and the changing of classics has to be one of the most cringy practices in the modern entertainment world, and that's just my personal take. Here's another PR blunder for Disney, another get woke, go broke situation, and this comes right after Disney cut 7,000 jobs and slashed their budget by $5.5 billion after losing a massive amount of Disney Plus subscribers. As Donald Trump said, Everything woke turns to sh**. Okay. I guess the question now is, when is Disney going to learn? That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you on the next one.